The Kansas City Chiefs head south this Sunday to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Betzak currently has Tampa installed as a three and a half point favorite in this game, 40 the total. Now the combined record of these two teams right now is two and seven, but when you look at it a little closer, these teams have really gotten off to very different starts to the year. Kansas City won the AFC West the year before last. They only finished a game out of first in the AFC West last year, despite losing some of their best players on both sides of the ball to injury. So I know a lot of Chiefs fans heading into this season were optimistic. Thought the Chiefs might be a contending team. They have been anything but one and four. And the most disturbing thing is three of their four losses have been by more than two touchdowns. So this Chiefs team has been blown out regularly. They did play better last week against Baltimore, especially on defense, losing 9-6 to the Ravens. We'll see if they can carry that defensive momentum on to this week because Tampa is no offensive juggernaut, 30th in the league right now in yards per game. So maybe this Chiefs defense will be able to continue to find the success they were, they, they were able to find last week. But Tampa Bay now, don't sleep on this team, 1-3 overall, but 3-1 and one against the number. They've been an excellent team to back, and that's mainly because the expectations for them heading into the season very different than Kansas City's. We mentioned some people, especially Chiefs fans, thought the Chiefs might be a contender this year, only a game out of the first in the AFC West last year. Nobody thought the Bucs were going to contend this year. They really quit on former coach Raheem Morris towards the end of last season. I believe the Bucs failed to cover nine out of their final ten games or something ridiculous last year. Of course, they brought in Greg Schiano, a collegiate coach from Rutgers. Schiano has that my way or the highway type mentality. A lot of people thought that wouldn't work well with today's NFL, today's athlete, but thus far the Bucs players seem to be responding extremely well. They've been competitive in every one of their four games. Really should have won a couple of those games they've lost. And a couple of them have been tough games. I mean, they, they went on the road to play the defending Super Bowl champion, New York Giants. Should have won that game. Went on the road to play the Dallas Cowboys. Had every opportunity to win that game. Coming off a bye last week, quite frankly, I like the Bucks' chances this week as a three-and-a-half point favorite against Kansas City. Now, this, this game will be strength versus strength. Kansas City's, offense, or Kansas City's strength on offense is running the ball. They average 180 yards a game rushing. That's good for second in the league. Tampa can stop the run. Tampa only allowing 73 yards a game, fourth best in the league. So, again, strength versus strength this week. We'll see which side will break. I do expect that Tampa defense to really limit this Chiefs running game because they know that's what the Chiefs like to do. They know the Chiefs like to pound the ball, and they know the Chiefs will likely be without their starting quarterback, Matt Castle, this week, who went down with an injury last week. Castle suffering a concussion. Now, the big story after that game was Chiefs offensive tackle Eric Winston being very public with his frustration and disgust at Kansas City fans who cheered Castle's injury. Castle had been under a lot of heat in Kansas City. A lot of people want to see a quarterback change made. And so many Chiefs fans actually cheered when Matt Castle was laying on the ground with a concussion. No doubt that's abhorrent behavior. And Eric Winston, Eric Winston rightly pointed that out after the game. Brady Quinn, though, the guy they were yelling for, Brady Quinn, the guy who they're going to get to see this Thursday on the road, if his previous stops in the NFL are any indication, I'm not sure that these people aren't going to be clamoring for Matt Castle after they see Brady Quinn for a couple of games. This guy did not have a good run in Cleveland and really didn't get much of an opportunity last year in Denver. But when he did get an opportunity in Denver, both in the preseason and in his limited opportunity in regular games, he did not look that good. I guess his main opportunity last year was in the preseason, but this guy did not do anything to show Denver coaches and fans that he was the man for the job, that he could be a better option than Kyle Orton or Tim Tebow. So Kansas City fans better be they better be careful what they wish for because they got it. You want to know Matt Castle? You got no Matt Castle. You got Brady Quinn. Let's see if he can go on the road this Sunday and pull out a win against the Tempe Buccaneers. As I told you, I have serious doubts because the Bucs have been playing good football this year despite their 1-3 and three record. They've been playing good football, 3-1 and one against the number, coming off a of bye week, facing a Kansas City team, coming off a tough emotional loss to Baltimore. You know Kansas City, that was their second home game in a row. I expected, we expected Kansas City to respond with a little pride in that game after getting run out of their own building by their division rival San Diego Chargers the week before Baltimore. And Kansas City did respond with pride in that game. They did play great against the Ravens, especially on defense. Had to be a gutting loss going on the road this week. Again, against a team coming off a bye week. A team that, not a sexy team, let's face it. These Chiefs players, I mean, they're humans. They're going to get more up for a matchup, say, a primetime matchup against the Dallas Cowboys or on the road against the Green Bay Packers or their second home game in a row against a great team in the Baltimore Ravens. You expect them to be a little more motivated for a game like that. 
than a Sunday afternoon road game against the 1-3 and three Tampa Bay Bucks. So I, I think that might hurt them. Again, I do expect the Bucks to come out and put a good game together. Too early in the week to, make in, to be making any final decisions. We don't put our picks on the site until Friday or Saturday, but I wouldn't be surprised if after a week of looking at this thing a little closer, Tampa minus 3.5 is one of my favorite games of the week.